Hey guys, I'm Spencer Smith, and this is Pete Doerr, and we're both of Pareto Health, and this video is about aggregating specific deductibles. Specs, I think it's, uh, this is probably one of my favorite things to teach. A little more co complicated, but we've already set the foundation of specific insurance and aggregate insurance. We've mm -hmm. talked about lasers, right? So we have this understanding of what bigger risk might look like versus the rest of the pool. Why don't you describe, though, aggregating specific deductible? Not the best name in the world, right? But what is an ag spec or what's an aggregating spec? Yeah, it's a really confusing term, perhaps the most confusing term that we have in stop loss. But the aggregating specific, essentially, is a bucket of claim dollars that exists on top of the specific deductible for a client. Before the stop loss carrier reimburses any type of claim, the employer has to eat all those claim dollars in that aggregating specific bucket before a stop loss carrier reimburses any portion of the claim. Okay. Okay. So kind of like almost like a family deductible, right? That's so I could have one person go over the ag or over the spec, right? That hundred k uh, marker, and then I could have that same person have over the other fifty. And so if that happened where one person went all the way through, now I'm going to get reimbursement from the carrier. If it didn't happen yet, if one person went over but I haven't completely breached both of those thresholds, nothing's gonna happen. That carrier's not gonna give me money back. You could also, like a family deductible, have two or three or four people that collectively satisfy. So how, how would that work, Pete? Yeah, it's accumulation of claims, right? And so we start, you know, it can, again, it could be one individual that eats up the entire bucket of those claims in this example, $50,000. It could be multiple individuals, right? Accumulating at the same time, perhaps. Employees one through five, right? All over the specific deductible by a little bit, mm -hmm. but accumulating claims toward and eating out of that $50,000 bucket. Yeah, so these people would basically together satisfy more than the 50,000. Now reimbursement kicks in, the plan functions exactly like it, it did before. We, mm -hmm. We've satisfied that extra layer, that soft dollar layer that the carrier has given us. Why would we do it though, right? There's, there's, a, there's a good question, like that's fine, but what's the point? Why would there's I do There's a couple this? different reasons and you can look at this a couple different ways. First, let's start with the employer. Okay, why as an employer would I buy exactly. an aggregating specific? Well, the first is that whatever that aggregating specific limit is, in this case it's $50,000, the stop loss carrier will often give you a dollar for dollar credit on the premium, okay. right? So again, in that example, if I pay $300,000 worth of stop loss premium and I want to employ a $50,000 aggregating specific, that premium now comes down to somewhere in that $250,000 range. So it's lowering my fixed costs. I get an if I'm an employer that decides I want to add one of these to my plan, it's going to lower my fixed costs, you said, mostly dollar for dollar, correct? Obviously, there's extreme circumstances where it isn't exactly dollar for dollar, but mm -hmm. they're still getting a credit. So they're lowering that fixed cost, but they're transferring some risk back. Well, basically, they're accepting more risk as an employer for right. the claim. So two mentalities as an employer group. First is I have clean risk, right? I, I I, I can see my claims, I can predict what that risk is. Obviously, I'm perfectly, I could get a claim in the course of the year, but as of this moment, my claims look good and yeah. I wanna reduce my premium. And so I'll, I'll employ that aggregating specific, okay? Right? The other side of that is, I know I have claims, right? I know I have two or three claimants. I know I'm going to have claim progression. History tells me that, my experience tells me that. And so I wanna buy down my premium knowing that I'm gonna eat those dollars in the aggregating specific and not lose anything in the end. Well, so that's the employer side of the equation. That's a voluntary addition, I would say, of an ag spec. Mm -hmm. There are situations where a carrier will now require an employer to take an ag spec that's because of certain circumstances. So what happens there? So think about a group coming from fully insured. What's our biggest complaint about fully insured? Lack of data, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We know that there's an individual that's going to be a high claim next year. I say, wait, the reinsurer knows that there's going to be a high claimant next year. Okay. They might have a diagnosis and a dollar amount, but we don't specifically know who that person is. Right, and so if we don't specifically, if the reinsurance carrier doesn't specifically know who that person is and they can't assess a laser, their own times employ that aggregating specific. They'll create that buffer of risk. So before they start paying out claims, again, the employer so the, has to so the effectively the stop loss carrier says, I need you to take this. If if we're going to write this case at this level, this premium level, without lasers or perhaps in lieu of lasers, or I just can't quite figure out who the laser would be. I need you to take this ag spec, Mr. or Mrs. Employer, but I'm not gonna give you credit, right? Premium credit in most circumstances for that. Is that correct? Or will they still sometimes give them the credit for it? That's correct. It depends on the reinsurer and what they wanna do, but most times they'll create that buffer of additional risk, not give the premium credit, right? Okay. Because again, they're looking to collect that premium for the unknown risk. They know that there's additional risk in the plan. That's what the aggregating specific is for. And so, you know, they'll, they'll often employ the ag spec. So, so once and, they, and by the way, yeah, think please, about yeah. employers across the country. You know, you have many people, many employer groups that are in a PEO. 
no experience. Groups coming from fully insured, depending on the fully insured plan, no experience, right? Reinsurers, you know, they don't like that unknown you know, risk element. And so again, this is one of the ways they can satisfy, you know, the, the getting enough premium and buffering that risk potentially that could hit their reinsurance. So what, what about downsides though, right? Because not everything has some sort of trade-off. We talked about the fixed cost reduction uh, for the soft dollar exposure, right? That effectively even out, mm -hmm. or if they make you, an, a stop loss carrier makes you take one because of that unknown risk, they're going to add it. But there are some downsides or what are the trade-offs? Yeah, so first from the employer standpoint, I think the biggest risk is that you never eat that bucket of claims, right? You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you're essentially, you know, getting that aggregating specific and never utilizing that if yeah. you have a great year, right? I guess that's a good problem. That's have, a good problem. If yeah. you don't have claims, right? From a carrier standpoint, once you employ the aggregating specific, it's up to them where they want to take that plan, that aggregating specific mm -hmm. away at renewal. And if giving the druthers, right, if you if you pull all reinsurance carriers out there, they're going to leave that buffer of risk in there, right? Because that helps them. Of right? course. Potentially, again, going back to the volatility of self-funded plans and some of the claims that we see, that one stop loss carrier, you know, 45% increase in one year on size and severity of claims. Anytime you give them an opportunity to hold that aggregating specific at renewal, they're going to take it. So you're, you're effectively, for lack of a better term, stuck with it once you put it on the So is that in the same, does that hold true as well? If I decide I want to add one myself as an employer, they still may require that I renew with it That's year correct. after year as well? Okay. Once you decide as an employer that you want to employ a, a, an aggregating specific, the carrier So you basically get to pull that lever once, that's right? Correct. Okay, all right, that's well, correct. fair enough. So that's, I, I love these because of the, especially in the circumstances where you get the credit, you get the fixed cost credit. I think that's a, a good play because it's kind of heads I win, tails I break even. Mm -hmm. um, Although we've definitely demonstrated some of the downsides. I think this is an interesting tool to have in your toolkit. Do we have any studies or do we ever look at how often these are actually employed on our You know, plan? I was just thinking about that earlier, you know, and, and when they first came out, obviously they were hugely popular, mm -hmm. right? This is a new tool for underwriters. This is a new tool for employers in a self-funded plan to reduce their premium. But I think over time, you know, less and less the employers use this. Uh, and so I, do, I don't know the actual percentages, but it has to be probably less than 10% okay. of all self-funded plans that are actually important. Every once in a while I try to ask you a question that you don't already have the answer. I don't think be. I have the, answer, the exact answer to that one, but I think I'm right. I think it's in the low low teens or 10% or somewhere around that. Sure, if I had to guess, I'd say you're probably right. Okay, so kind of going back over a summary. So